Mountain Sun. <laughs> Welcome back to the Color Clouds Podcast. I'm always <laughs> Ryan. And uh, as always, uh, my uh, co-host, Dylan, you know, my best bud. The, the only person that I want to do this podcast with, except when we have guests. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I'm fucking tired of shit. Uh, anyways, we're going to talk our reads for this week. and uh, I'll read Which them. were all awesome. Every all single awesome. book this week was awesome. Yeah, really dope. Um, I'll, first off, my, my favorite, Milestone Returns. I've been waiting a long time for this fucking yes. uh, universe to come back. And then we also read Made in Korea. Really dope book. Mr. Miracle, Source of Freedom. And, of course, we're going to be touching on Heroes Are Born. And uh, I guess let's we, we just get Heroes Are Born out of the way. Let's, let's do, do it. it. First, okay. first and fucking foremost. Best James issue, yeah. Fucking, yeah, be, James Stucco. Yeah. Woo! He's becoming yeah. my new favorite artist. Like, I love oh. this fool so oh, much. Let me tell you, dude. I, I, I forgot that he was on this issue at first. So, like, I was, like, putting the books out at work. And I, like... And I looked at the cover, and I'm like, "Oh, I gotta, I have to open it real quick, you know." And I, <laughs> it, I just opened to some random page, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta close it. I, I, this is, this is too much. This is just, it's so fucking good." Like Jason Aaron's writing is the best on this issue, I think. Maybe that's because of the art being so good. You know, this one's focused on uh, uh, Doctor Spectrum, which is kind of like the Green Lantern analog. Yeah. Oh the, no, it's totally Green Lantern. Totally, one hundred percent Green Lantern. Like, and this is nothing against Jason Aaron. Like, dude, the writing was phenomenal, but James Stoko sold the show with this. Yeah, book. dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jason. Like, we love you. We love you uh, so much. But let's let's not freaking – let's do away with all the pleasantries here. My yeah. man, James Stoko, stole the show. Every single panel, every single page that, Joe, that, that Stoko touched, man. It made me excited for him to work on more Mar- work on more Marvel things. Like I would love to see like a Spider Man by Stoko or just offbeat characters like like Squirrel Girl by Stoko. Like you know what I mean? Like you know what I think he'd be really good on? It's not Marvel. I think he'd be what? dope on Swamp Thing, dude. Yeah. Could you imagine? Oh my god. The level of oh. detail and like I just the fucking see, vines coming off and shit. I would oh. love to see like a whole book by Stoko where it's like Solomon Grundy versus Swamp Thing. Yeah. Oh, dude. I mean, he Look, I love his creator own stuff. I think we you know, we both talked about Orphan and the Five Beasts how much we were, were loving that book, but I mean, Not and how then much I read that, it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he, he drew, James Stoko also drew that Clown Hunter, uh, the Batman annual where it was about yeah. Clown Hunter, and that was really dope. But yeah, this this issue, like Rocket, <laughs> is so dope in this. Like, and how I'll spoil it. Whatever, Groot is a fucking gun. Yeah, it's a goddamn gun, and he's like shooting little fucking like little Groots, Spike. little I am Groots. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, just like. Honestly, like, I don't, I won't get too much more into the story because, like, this is something you really need to experience. I had to talk about the Rocket thing, though, because, like, that was, like, the standout. I love the way Rocket was depicted. I love the, like, the voice that Jason gave him. You know what I mean? Like, he sounded really fucking badass. Uh, And he was, he was essentially Lobo. (laughs) Like, (laughs) this is just such a dope book. And uh, there's a lot of other things that that take place in it. I, again, don't want to spoil too much of it. Because, like, I, I want to give people a chance to, like, kind of experience this themselves. But, like, like all the other ones, we focus on a different Squadron Supreme member, right? Um, yeah. But I think Rocket is just as much a star of this issue. And then, of course, you know, we have the tie-in from this story to the main narrative of this, you know, this world. And we don't have Cap or Blade in here. We have yeah. uh, the new Star brand, right? We have, we have her in here. And she, like... Without spoiling too much, like, she's been raised by Rocket. So, like, that kind of should tell you all you need to know. You know what I mean? Like, so. A lot of I really, Yeah, I really, love, I really love this book. But I, I don't, I mean, you, you know, share with me what how you felt about it. But I don't want to, like, give too much of, like, the main, um, what I we're mean, seeing. I mean, I mean, I mean the, 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 the plot twist at the main narrative literally dropped my jaw. So, that was great. Um, I love the fact that they put the, the, the whole intergalactic lawman thing under a, 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 under a different perspective where everybody hates them that, that yeah. I really enjoyed. And, you know, like the, 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 the beings who send Bounty Hunter, Rocket, Lobo to 
get friggin' uh, to, to to go after Doctor Spectrum, that was awesome. Like, I don't know. Um, I loved it. I loved it. I I loved. I love the I, I I like like you said I love the voice of Rocket, I love the outrageousness of it, and the thing is like, it, it it was it was outrageousness that was unbound by the fact that it was all space right, so you could literally go off and do the craziest things simply because it's space right, like I mean, Doctor Spectrum reacts in certain ways, and does things that can only be done in space. Rocket has weaponry. <laughs> Rocket I, has weaponry. <laughs> that like, can I, only I want a rocket. I want a. I want a rocket book by Jason Aaron and James Stoko. Yes, I, and yes. it doesn't even have to be this version. You know, no, no. it can be the regular. You know, but like, dude, this was. I, I, okay, look, I've often talked shit about event books. You know, and I, this normally this would be the book that I would talk the most shit about. You were giving yeah. me a new issue every fucking week like that is a lot for a series like that's a lot of money to drop in yeah. seven weeks like five dollars like so basically 40 bucks you're dropping within a, such a short period of time on one book so like that's a lot but every issue has been good and this is the most fun event that i've read in a long time like i think i said like abs not absolute carnage king and black. king and black you know like oh it's a blockbuster event it's just supposed to be like a fun book but this doesn't that doesn't even come close to the level of enjoyment that I'm getting from Heroes yeah. Reborn. And it's it, and it was un, un, I was on uh I was surprised by it. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I'm like it's Jason Aaron, I love his writing. I his Avengers has been kind of like to me uh, in the middle of like I like it. I you know, it's it's not necessarily my favorite Avengers run, but it's cool. Uh, but this is just I, I now I'm like enjoying Squadron Supreme. I never thought I would say that. To be honest, yeah, with I never same. thought those words would leave my mind. One hundred percent. It's just a great. It is. It's a really good book, and now I'm even more so hyped to see what's going to come out of this. You know, like it's just a really great book. I think everybody that's listening and watching, like, if you were skeptical about it, I get it. And like I said last week, if you want to wait for the trade, I get that too. But just read it, no matter how you're reading it, digitally. Which, you know, I love print, but I don't care. Just read this fucking book because this will just, you're going to enjoy it. It's just a fun fucking story. Each issue has been that way. Honestly, you know what I mean? Like, and it gets yeah, better. Honestly, depending on how it turns out, I might even pick up the omnibus because, like, if the main narrative is this good, like, you know, Jason's kind of like, spe Jason's kind of like spearheading it, right? So he obviously has a say in what's happening in the storyline. So, I'm I'm really curious to see how uh, the tie-ins mesh with the, the with the main name. I haven't read any of the tie-ins. I, 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 I have uh, plans to read the Magneto and the Mutant Force. That's that's one I'm, I'm looking forward to. I was gonna bring it home, but I had such a large stack of books that I brought home to read this week. So I'm like three tie-ins too to Heroes Are Born. Like there's four. Like yeah. I don't know. I'm like you know maybe I'll just wait. I'll see how far I get with my reading for the rest of the week because like you know also reading a graphic novel i'm like i don't want to like burden myself and i don't want to take it from the shop if we don't right. have a tremendous amount of copies right, so right, right. i'll eventually probably check out some of the times but yeah uh here's a born really dope really good go check it out let's talk our next book let's talk made in korea you have been singing the praise of this. this book for one month because we yeah. get advanced pdfs of this book and they they sent this one to us really early early oh. super early but I wanted to wait. I wanted to read it in print because of how good you said it was. But I want you to take the lead on this. Uh, let's read the. I'll read the credits and then you uh, kick it off. Uh, Jeremy Holtz on story, George Shaw on art, lettering Adam Wall. Now, artist and letter. First time I'm seeing them. Jeremy Holt is a name I recognize. I, but I haven't read a lot of his work. This might be the first book that I read by him. Yeah, I mean, um, I I'm sure I've seen his name before, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this, this takes place in a, in, in a semi-dystopian future. There's mm -hmm. something going on where I that, they haven't really delved into it. Well, where, where basically it seems like people can't give birth anymore. People can't have kids anymore. They go to an outside company and mm -hmm. they they buy fully grown kids already. Like so, 
It's like it's like AI kids, like you know. Uh, and this company, this guy who works for the company that makes it in Korea, I think he discovered a brand new AI system, a complete mm-hmm. sentient AI system. Without giving away too much of the plot story, a family a, a family picks up a kid and th- picks up the kid that the the, the programmer finds a sentient the, the sentient programming for, and you know they start to have a, they start to have children they, they 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 start their family. What grasps me about this is it's like even though it seems dystopian, it's not dystopian. Like everybody seems relatively happy, you know. Uh, yeah. The world isn't in shambles. Like you know. When, when when they go from Korea to Conroe, Texas, like there's no sign of like there's this like deep dredge of like apocalyptic defeat. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So yeah, I there's think it's this, interesting. Yeah, they can't have babies, but they're still okay. Like that's weird, right? They resort to having to having these little little cyborg little cyborg kids who I don't even know if they grow. I don't I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? They, well, there's, they, they a, there's a lot going on for sure. There's a like, lot going they don't... on, they, but they don't divulge much, which it, it, it's a good science fiction mystery, right? Like, yeah. where does it go from here? Like, like as far as far as the tone of the comic, it it ranges from really creepy to really bright and happy. So, you know, especially when they show the panel where the dude goes into the 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 room with all the all the kids hanging with all the the cyborg kids hanging and all their eyes are glowing red like yeah, like you know <clears throat> like you know what i mean like I, I don't know if that's if that's foreshadowing but there's something about this comic that i'm gravitating towards that i really like and it's the writing it's the the, the natural feel of the dialogue the the art the art is great it's not like too much for the eyes but at the same time it's incredibly beautiful yeah 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 i you know? i agree i i well, after I read it, I'm like, dude, I totally see. I told, I think I told Nick, or I thought it in my head, one of the two, I don't know. But I was like, I totally <laughs> see why Dylan loved the book so much and why he kept bugging me to read, like, well, bugging <laughs> me to read it, you know? Because it really is a great mystery. You don't really, you're not really given much information. You're kind of just thrust in here, and the world building is not really taking place. Like, yeah. so, so to me, it's like, there's two kinds of first issues you can get. Three, yeah. actually. There's yeah. one where there's a lot of world building, a lot of setup, right? Or there's and then there's one like this, where you're given a little bit of information, but you kind of have to decipher what's 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 taking place, what's happening, right? Yeah. Or you just have a shitty first issue and it's crap. This is <laughs> this is uh this is a great first issue because like I like this kind or I like the one where there's world building. But yeah. like you open up, right? And like you're it's just in a software engineering division of some company. So you really don't like if you didn't look at the cover and kind of know that they're making cyborg children, you wouldn't you wouldn't really know what's going on, right? Like you just oh, this guy works at an engineering place, software engineer. And then when you go to that birthday party and they're all like, Oh my god, it looks so real. And you like then you walk in and you see this. It's the baby's first like, birthday. Like, wait, what? Yeah. But he's a grown kid. And, like, yeah. one thing that I did notice is that the kid that you see at that birthday party and then the kid that the, these parents that are what I can only assume are going to be, like, the other main characters besides the software engineer, the kids both look like the parents, yeah. kind of. Like, in, like I, what I, I'm assuming is, like, an amalgamation of them. So how is that taking place, right? Like, do you are you kind of giving over your DNA like so that yeah. they kind of form this kid to look similar to you? And uh, so there's that, that, that was interesting. And then, you know, I really like, you know, the kid that they get at the end, she's, she's like scared and like, she's like really trepidatious and like, and doesn't want to fucking like be near them. And then they put her in this room and it's lined with, I love, I love the way that I love it was lined with books. It's so like dope. I don't know why, but I got like really. I'm like, dude, that would be so awesome. Just have my graphic novels just lined up, yeah, just you know, with like in an attic. And then she like wakes up the next day, and they're like, "Are these dreams?" Like she's like asking all these questions, and that just like got me so hyped for the next issue. Like I was yeah, very excited to see what is going to take place next. Cause she just soaked it all in. Whatever. She, she, she's still a machine, right? So. Yeah. 
she's a brand new machine, brand new sentient. So like the first thing that sentient beings do is is a, is a thirst for knowledge, and to put her in a in an attic full of books, like that's like the best thing you could do. Yeah. Like it's great. Like um, I really like the, the how they establish what kind of people these characters are. Like the parents. Like you know what I mean. They they. They, they they kind of just establish what kind of people the parents are. Like the dad is a little is a little uh, you know withheld from like the whole cyborg children thing. The mom she obviously wants children, but you know she's very you know what I mean. But she can't. But they can't have kids or whatever. I don't know what the deal is. And yeah. you know then they they and then and how they establish just the key players. There's a lot of there's there's four characters in here that are the key players. It's the two parents, the, the software engineer. And, and the the, the, the and the girl and we see w like they establish pretty much who they are in this first issue. They don't establish what the what the rest of the world is, but this is very strong in that sense. You know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. No, the writing and the art and the coloring, everything about it is uh, very strong. Like I said, I definitely can see why you love the book because I really really enjoyed it, and I'm definitely excited, like excited to see if nothing else, like. I just want to know what happens next. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's... I, I, I don't want to say it's... It, like, it wasn't, like, my favorite book that came out this week, but it was a very, very strong first issue. And that's... Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen often where I read a first issue in a series and I'm like, okay, I want to see what's next. Usually, I'll be like, I'll check it out when the trade comes out. But, no, I I need to read the second issue. Like, I, I don't think I would... I'm patient enough to wait. You know, I want to see... Right. It's only a mini series, I believe, too, right? A five issue series, I think. So, I believe so, yeah. So it's it's definitely interesting to see. I, I'm curious, like, can people not have kids? I don't think that's the case. I think this is just a new way of people having kids. They don't actually say that you like having children is impossible now. But like to me, like I kind of read it like, oh, people can't have children. But yeah. if you couldn't have children, like the human race would die. Yeah. So and, and I don't and, think it's like they and, and, magically and, and, just immediately had the technology to make kids you right. know and then having kids as ais like that doesn't save the human race either then we're just going to have a planet of eventually a planet of robots of children so, cyborgs yeah so that's you know I, i'm curious i'm <laughs> I, I i'm curious about this world i think it's a very like very solid comic and yeah. um, I, people should go check this out for sure yeah i've been seeing, i've been seeing praises about it for for like a month now and uh probably when issue 2 comes out i'll be singing praises of it for a week <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really good. So uh, let's should I talk no, let's about, talk about Mr. Miracle and save save uh, the best for last. Save, save the okay. best for last because right. easy. Okay, Mr. Miracle, the Source of Freedom by Brandon Eason, oh, Taiko man. Osio, Rico Renzi's a colorist. Rob Lay is a letter um, with a dope. Rico cover. Renzi is another colorist who is fucking awesome too. Oh, he's way. dope. He was Rico dope. Renzi. He used to be the colorist on on Bitterroot. Yeah, he was a color in the, yeah. the first arc. And he was and also then, uh, a colorist on uh, Sea of Stars. Like, just right. awesome, yeah, yeah. awesome, awesome, really uh, colored books. Yeah, his color palette is fucking really, really dope. Yeah. So, and then what, the Yannick Paquette cover, too, is is phenomenal. Not to take away from the cardstock cover that came out, but that A yeah. cover, the colors just fucking explode off of the page, you know? Yeah. Now, this <laughs> is a book I wasn't sure I was going to pick up. If you didn't tell me to pick it up, or that you wanted to read it. I wasn't, I don't know that I would have read it until maybe the trade came out. Now, yeah. that's nothing against the book. It's nothing against the creators on the book. I just, you know, I, my Mr. Miracle is scot free. So yeah, I, like, nice. I, I like Shiloh Norman. And I think that, you know, Grant Morrison created a really interesting character with it when he did the Seven Soldiers of Victory years ago, because that's where this Mr. Miracle f was first, uh, or first appeared. You know, I still, like, I was intrigued. I like the artist because, you know, he did uh, No One Left to Fight by Dark Horse, which was, like, that, oh, like, yeah. Dragon Ball Z type book. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was really dope there. But let me tell you, I opened the book, and after I put it down, the first thought that came across my mind was, thanks, Dylan. You know? Thank you, Dylan, <laughs> for making me read it. And then after that, that thought came in, I'm like, damn, that was a fucking dope-ass book. Good. And that I was, came to work. I was like, Nick, you you need to take it home and read it because I was blown away by how much I enjoyed it. You know, yes, like agreed, this book agreed. is not like some like, oh, my God, it's the greatest comic I ever read. But it was so good. Like, it was a really good comic. And the this writing is definitely was not scot free. You know what I mean? No, 
it's, it's definitely a, not it's a, it's a brand new it's a brand new mr miracle which i'm okay with you know what i mean yeah and they, they, they talk about the mantle and the mask a bit in this and yeah, go, yeah. and going forward it's going to be it's going to play an important thing but you know what i really liked about this is uh the per, the, the perspective of modern day right of uh popularity and pop culture and mr miracle in that pop culture and how he would affect that uh, pop culture right yeah so you know he he has he, he's literally the the red bull guy who jumped from the atmosphere right from the edge of the atmosphere and had a pay-per-view for it right he's literally like he's selling action figures he's 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 a marketing he, he's a one big piece of marketing but he's also a superhero still i mean albeit right. he's street level but he's still a superhero what i really liked about this is the perspective of uh, being an african american superhero and the importance of wearing a mask right why the, it's, the relevance. why it's important to him yeah, well, which I, I felt to wear a mask. That was that was interesting to me. Yeah, you know, because because his uh, his agent <laughs> who's Jewish, so he's like, I kind of get what you're going through. He's like, you should just take off your mask, reveal your identity. He's like, no. And I thought that him saying that um, the only time he feels free, like he can be himself, is when he has that mask on because nobody's yeah. judging him. And him yeah. walking down the street and a woman grabbing her purse because it's a black man walking down the street now. I think that, you know, with the with the way the world has been, especially within the last like year and a half, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, this could have been preachy, you know, this could have come a come across that where like, oh, are they just doing it to do it, right? Are they just talking about race to talk about it through this lens of a black superhero? And it didn't come across that way to me, you know. I I mean, because it could have. It, it very easily it could, have. could have it could have gone a different way to where you're like you're just utilizing this character because of that and it and it what but it wasn't that you know I I really I really dug the way Brandon Easton portrayed Shiloh Norman and you know talking about his feelings being a black superhero and then also the importance of like no you should show your face you should like people should know who you are. So I thought that was really cool, and the art was just like fucking ten to me, ten out of ten, dude. This art was dude, just so the fucking. The art was nuts. Everything about it, there's it was kinetic. The details, all the facial expressions on Shiloh, yeah. God, dude, it is it, it it was phenomenal. Like the art, I was blown away by the art and the fact that he's wearing Jays like in one of the shots. Some Jays I had never seen before, but I kind of want them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's it's dope. Everything about it is dope. And like I said, Rico Renzi, Rico Renzi definitely knows how to set a mood with his uh, with his color palette. Oh, you he's know what I mean? One like, of the best uh, colors in the business for sure. Easily. And the big reveal at the end. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> don't want to say it, but that was that was weird. I'm like, wait, how is that even possible? Kind of, you know? Yeah, explain like, yourself. Like you're it's, supposed to be a baby. Yeah, is that character from the future? I, I mean, not that I care, but the design for that costume was pretty fucking crazy, too. Yeah. Um, but what I like is that, you know, everybody's calling him a thief, you know, uh, a, a fake, like that he's not the real Mr. Miracle. And and they're calling him out, dude. And I think that that will be an interesting a dynamic for the book going forward, because that's why this character comes comes in at the end, you know, yeah. like, oh, this is not your mantle to, to bear. And right. The, the original Mr. Miracle series from the 70s by Jack Kirby, you know, the king of comics, the original Scott Free was like, he did, he performed fucking, like, acts of, you know, miracles, right? Escaping Act, stuff. Acts of escape. Part. So, and he also took the mantle from somebody else and became a new Mr. Miracle. So, th there's that aspect that's kind of bleeding over into this one except now we're living in a day of like pay-per-view and the acts are becoming a little bit bigger so i just dude i'm telling you like i was i really dug this fucking book and this is another one where i was gonna trade weight it but now i i want to read yeah i strongly suggest like if if you just like the, the character of uh of mr miracle itself this is a fresh new take on it and this is a great place to pick up um it's 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 dope it's it's a dope book like from, yeah from story from story to writing to voices to art to coloring this like this mr miracle has it all 
I mean, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not Tom King, Mr. Miracle, where it was just absolutely life changing. But this is something special. This is definitely something special that you guys need to check out. Agreed. That's it. Agreed. I'll tell you what, something special is that everybody needs to check the fuck out. My fucking milestone returns. Milestone. Milestone zero. Bro, Dude. let me just start off by saying origin stories have been retold and rehashed and all this, but the origin story of the Big Bang in Dakota presented in Milestone Returns has to be one of the dopest things I've ever seen. <laughs> like, yeah, whoa. I mean, this Holy is... Holy crap. Grade A stuff. This oh. has been such a long time coming. Like, I am so stoked that this is finally back. Now, I had a little insight into why it took so long. Dennis Cowan came into the shop to sign all our copies. And actually, I'm talking to him tomorrow. Uh, the day, Actually, the day that this video posts uh, is, is when I'm talking to him. Um, and I've been trying to talk to him about this for a while. But because it's, it's DC and, like, they're like, no, we have to go through the proper channels. But anyways, the biggest advocate for the return of Milestone at DC was Jim Lee. But there was somebody that was kind of keeping that from happening for the past few years. I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to, like, burn anybody or kind of give away information that I heard being said at the shop, you know. But either way, I'm glad it's finally back. Yes. because. Milestone, the universe of the characters, has long been some of my favorite characters. We got Static, obviously. We got Hardware. We got Blood Syndicate. We got Icon, Rocket, Zombie. We got all these characters, dude. And they're finally coming back in such a big way. And it's amazing to see they're needed. You know what I mean? Like, they are. this is the perfect time for them to come back. I want to read the credits real quick before we jump into the story. Uh there's two different it's ones, a lot right? Of yeah, so we got the Big Bang, which is the main story, and then we have at the back, which is uh, we'll talk. It's a little confusing if you're like you're flipping and you're like, wait, what's happening? But those are the fandom preview pages that they showed at that event. So uh, Re Reginald Hudlin is the writer for for all of it, and uh, we had Greg Pack who does a little bit of uh, a couple pages in the backup story. Uh, Art Dennis Cowan, Nicholas Draper Ivy. Uh, Bill Sienkiewicz, Chris Sotomayor, Chris Cross, Juan Castro, Will Quintana. That's on the main stuff, right? And then in the back, we got some pages by Jim Lee, Ryan Benjamin, uh, Dennis Cowan with Jimmy Palmiotti, Ryan Benjamin with Don Ho, Dennis Cowan with Bill Sienkiewicz, Coy Pham, Scott Hanna, Colors by Alex Sinclair, Hi-Fi, Chris Sotomayor, and Ant World Design did all of the lettering. Nicholas Draper Ivy. Nicholas Draper Ivy. I've been following him. I, okay, so I follow artists sometimes. That like I don't I I just like their art and I'm not really too familiar with, them, with their work aside from their art. Like there's a couple of guys, uh, Kaiserella. Uh, 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 this there, there's this guy. He's uh, doing Gotham number three that I, I, I've been following for years. Uh, he's finally doing a uh, uh, Future State Gotham number three. Uh, and Nicholas Jaber Ivy is one of those one of those artists that I follow. I'm not really too familiar with their stuff, but as soon as like I heard that like, like, like he's doing static stuff. I was like, holy crap, dude, you made it. And I was here for it. Like, he is a gifted, gifted fucking artist, dude. Oh, holy crap. He's you got like, talk the manga about, vibes, like, too. Like, he, he has, like, modern manga vibes to it. But at the same time, it's like, it's, a, it's, it's American comics at its best, dude. It's, it's hip-hop manga, dude. That's what it is, hip-hop yeah. manga. <laughs> I mean, and I, I love, love I, and, and, like, I, I love how uh, his, early, his designs of, Virgil, he's like literally said, "Oh yeah, I got I got Virgil's hair design from Basquiat." Like what? Yeah, so if you see, so if if you see a couple pages where it looks like Basquiat, no, like, know that I I directly took it from Basquiat. Like, yeah. wow, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you know what dude, I mean, I, mean I, I love how they did how why the Big Bang happens too, and yeah. how like the, a Black Lives Matter protest that was dope because yeah. that's one thing Milestone has always been about, and it's always been talking about real world fucking problems real shit that's taking place in the country and what better way to like i like when i flipped and i saw that i'm like dude this is perfect this is exactly this makes sense this makes sense for why there's a big crowd because like this you know i don't know when this was drawn um i, I would imagine it was a few months ago 
But this is like very relevant to what's going on in the country today. And to see Virgil at the forefront of like this protest, you know, like that was it just it made me smile. Dude, like this is exactly what I would expect from Milestone. And it, it delivered on every single aspect of what I wanted when this book came back. And I, I just I can't wait. This only made me more hyped. And I was already really hyped. I mean, I've been talking about Milestone for a long time. And I mean, the first one of the first questions I asked when I interviewed Dennis, the, like when we did a written one was when is it coming back, dude? When the fuck are we going to get? That was almost three years ago. You know, yeah. so I've been fucking asking him every single time we talk, what's up? When's it coming? When's it coming? And to finally have it in my hand in a physical form and to not have to wait because it was originally going to be digital first. Um, and he told me, he said, so many retailers were pissed that it was going to be digital only that DC had no choice but to put it in print. Same Atta day. boy. Yeah. So, Atta I mean, boy. yeah. And it, it like, makes me happy to know that, you know? Th this is the fantastic issue zero because it reintroduces characters we know and love, but, like, in a modern... In, in a more, I mean, granted, it, like, you know, Milestone was only about... It was only about, like, 20... It was almost 30 years ago. Holy crap. 93? 93 is when it dropped, I believe. Yeah. Right so around the same time image. Years. Yeah. Right? And it, the way they introduce... Uh, they reintroduce characters like Icon and Holocaust... And it's 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 fantastic. I, I especially love uh, the icon uh, narrative where he's yes. talking to like the UN. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. has a line here. It's like I have no desire to rule you, much like you have no desire to rule an ant hill. <laughs> dude, dude, Reginald Hudlin is such a fucking good writer. I am Ooh. so glad that he's a part of Milestone because he was not in the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, when Milestone first formed, he wasn't a part of it. But, I mean, dude, he was, like, the president of BET. He wrote an amazing Black Panther run. So, like, of course he should be a part of this new iteration. And just the dialogue, dope. The the the, the clothing, too, feels so modern. Like, it's just, like, Nicholas Draper Ivy's, like, he's, it's, he's just such a perfect artist for this book. And yeah. I love, I just love... His design for Static now, um, I'm I'm so glad that we're not just getting just this one shot and having to wait too long. Next month, boom, drops. Static is coming out. Hardware exactly. is coming out by Vita Ayala, who I fucking love, who is killing, who killed it on New Mutants. Freaking yeah. Vita Ayala is great, dude. Vita yeah. Ayala. <laughs> I'm I mean, so dude, excited. Brandon Thomas is writing fucking hardware. Yeah. I'm here for that. You know, like. Like Dude, this, this, this milestone returns zero. Like literally, just builds the hype that was already there. Like, yeah. if if you aren't picking this up, you're missing out on a fucking a milestone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pardon the pun, but I mean shit. No, I, I agree, dude. And the, I mean, you you mentioned that Holocaust is back, Blood Syndicate. There was no mention of Blood Syndicate coming back. So to me, that was more of like a. That was a surprise cliffhanger because yeah. everybody was like, when's Blood Sitting get? Oh, DC's not going to publish a book like that nowadays. They wouldn't do it. But, I mean, I think it's fair to see. I mean, uh, look at that. Fair assessment is that, no, they're going to do it. So, I mean, the first round of books, we get the we get the covers to all of them. Um, you know, we have Static, obviously, Vita Ayala, Chris Cross, and Nicholas Draper Ivy. We got and, Icon and Rock. And Carrie Randolph doing the covers. Oh. Kari Randolph, yeah. Kari like Atari. Uh, I like Atari. <laughs> then we got Icon and Rocket by Reginald Hudlin, Leon Chills, and Doug Braithwaite. We got Brandon Thomas, Dennis Cowan, and Bill Sienkiewicz on hardware. Uh, and, uh, dude, I, I mean, they even introduced new characters that we're going to see. There's new additions to the Milestone universe, like I said, when Greg Pak in the backup. Um, I think it's that couple that... Yeah. Uh, I the think Asian that's couple? the new characters. Yeah, the new the Asian couple. And then we also have that dude with the wings. That's a new character. Uh, they, I don't He's a they, murderer they, and a racist. I don't know what's happening, but that's what they said. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know, dude. This is just, this book made me so happy. This is my pick of the week, my favorite yeah. book of the week by far. And, 100%. I mean, I love Dennis Cohen. He's one of my favorite artists. He's done some of my favorite comics of all time. I mean, the question by him and Denny O'Neill still is one of my favorite runs. You know, he's done everything. He's done Black Panther. He's done, you know, Power Man and Iron Fist. He has done pretty much everything. Batman. 
I mean, th- there's not much this guy hasn't done, and he has been tirelessly trying to get Milestone back. And to finally see all his hard work and others' hard work, Reginald Hudlin too, Jim Lee, all that, um, work fruition is just amazing to see. It makes me happy to know that, like, this universe of characters was not just relegated to being in the past and never to be seen from again. Um, and I think the hype for it is it, it's there. People are excited. I, I mean, they were going to do digital first. And obviously, people want to see them in print. Because they, they fucking, like, before, I mean, before it even was released digitally, they're like, no, it's dropping. Because a lot yeah. of people, I, I know, I'm, I'm in the milestone group on Facebook, and a lot of people were asking, like, well, what the fuck, when is it going to be in print? You know, right. a lot of people still want their print books and don't read digitally. So, I, I, I don't I, know, I'm very excited. I, I'm, I'm really excited for the Static uh, series that's coming out on HBO. Uh if this is any inklings as to how the, the approach they're taking it, I'm I'm here for it. Especially with like, dude, it's just it's a dope. This is a dope issue zero. This yeah. is how you do an issue zero, especially with characters beloved by so many people. You know, I mean, and, I agree. Uh, sure. You know, I would love to see like you know you know there's talks about Michael B. Jordan playing a black Superman. Dude, have Michael B. Jordan play Icon. Like, or yeah, or I don't know. Or, I, I don't know why they're or doing, hardware. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing a Black Superman when you have such a rich universe of characters. That why don't you just adapt a milestone movie? You know, a, a milestone comic. Make one of them. Make an icon movie. Like that would be dope. You know, like make static. Just, make an excellence like, book. An excellence movie. Like there's so many. There's so many black characters here that need to get their shine. Like God knows when we're gonna get that Spawn movie with Jamie Fox, right? Like, there's so much source material out here that they need to shed light on. Icon, Icon needs to be at the forefront of this. I mean, Static needs to be at the forefront of this. Like, Rocket, Rocket's awesome too. Like, holy crap. Like, yeah, I think Static I is the perfect segue because there's already, like, a basic knowledge in the, in the public eye because of the cartoon. Yeah. Like, maybe not everybody remembers that cartoon, but I think it's a safer bet to do that and then you could do other milestone movies. You know, like you could have you could have icon in the background or whatever, or have it be a post-credit scene and then do an icon movie. Or you could have hardware in the movie in the background and then like do more. This is all this these is, characters, you could build you could build a universe. You could build a universe off this yeah, easily, a cinematic this, universe off of it. Exactly. All of these characters are so rich and have such distinct personalities and Dude, I'm telling you, I don't know if you've ever read Hardware, uh, but it's dope as fuck, dude. I mean, it is such. I a didn't cool read thing. Hardware. I did read. I did read Blood Syndicate though, and I really, I really, really like okay. Blood Syndicate. I mean, I, I say we we do a Hardware. I just recently read the first Tradesworth. I I got the single issues. Luckily, before yeah. the fucking milestone books skyrocketed on eBay because they're yeah. now they're they were already hard to find because the print runs get so small as the issues go on. But I definitely think you should read Hardware. I mean, he's he's a genius level intellect, and he gets manipulated by this dude that basically saved him from poverty. But like, I mean, and it talks about it in here, right? Like, yeah. You don't. Yeah. How the company, Alva. So, oh, dude, Alva's such a fucking piece of shit. And uh, in the old one, I'm excited to see what takes place next. Uh, I like that they're doing like these seasons, like season one. So like. There is the possibility we'll get more. I know all of them are going to be six-issue series, but I'm going to tell you right now, dude, this will be... the the This line of books is going to be so hyped by me. I will pop up from behind my desk at work if people come in on Wednesdays, <laughs> and I'm going to be like... I'm going to shame them if they don't buy the book. I will Plastic. fucking promote the shit. Yeah, I will promote the shit out of it. I did it with Red Room last week. Well, I peeked, and I'm like, who's here? No, I can't. And then I would pop back down if I'm like, I can't sell the book to them but i think that this is an important universe of characters i think that it's being done by a tremendous uh stable of talent everybody that's on the book is or on the books are just phenomenal creators and dude i just ah so excited to have them back after all these years really really excited i mean i've done a couple videos on on the channel i did a where i went through hardware number one i went through blood syndicate number one 
we did static volume one the the graphic novel and yep. i mean i've talked about it every single time how much i love these characters and to finally see them being promoted as much as they are it's it's really dope plus i, I anytime i can get a monthly dennis callum book i'm fucking happy yeah, I want to. I I, I want to. I, I hope that uh, the creators like see this, and I just want to know: uh, Was there a playlist you were listening to while creating this these comics? And if so, shoot them at your boy, because uh, I'm gonna need to hear that. Much yeah. like uh, Kari did for our uh, our excellent playlist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I would I would love to hear that too. I want to know what Nicholas Draper Ivy is listening to while he's fucking gifting the world with his amazing art. You know, dude, it's dope. Like his stuff is dope. Like there's something about it that like is just absolutely 100 percent magnetizing. It is. I I mean, the minute I saw, I just I didn't see I didn't discover him until I saw that announcement, and I'm like, what the? Where did this dude come from? Like, how have I never seen his art? And I just think that it's it's cool to see him get put on what I consider a very high profile project. Um, and I think only the sky's the limit for this dude. Like he's yeah. and he's young. He's only gonna get better. Yeah. So I, I just get more I refined. Hope, yeah. I just hope everybody Fantastic picks up this, picks up milestone returns. You pick up the books uh, when they come out starting next month. That's when that milestone universe officially like off with the ongoings because they're just they're dope and all the creative teams a list yes 100 percent i'm i'm here for all of it i'm i'm here i'm i, I will be a milestone advocate uh dennis cowan if you want to send me a t-shirt that'd be cool too want to send us shirts that'd be dope <laughs> it's a big milestone m on it yeah i might make my own I'll make you one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they have any milestone shirts. But I, I, I too, want to make a milestone shirt. So. Yeah, that, that's what's uh, missing in comics. Like, how come publishers just don't sell shirts with their logo on it? Like, I would love a shirt with just the image I on it. Or the milestone M on it. You know what I mean? Or just the DC bullet. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what I want. Like, But yeah, so that's this, this week. <laughs> dope, dope dope books that came out this week very very excited by everything that came out um pick them up and let's talk i can see that you're already looking for next week's <laughs> book so yeah uh well obviously we're talking heroes are born um that's that's a given i looked at the list yesterday and you know there's there's not a, like anything that i was like oh we really got to talk about that i thought i'd throw yeah. out crush and lobo just because I love Lobo, so I don't know if you want to it. talk about that. Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Because I was surprised <laughs> by the Mr. Miracle book. I'm wondering maybe I'll be surprised by Crush and Lobo, you know, because yeah, I, exactly. I'm skeptical on it. So there's that. And then, I don't know, maybe Firepower? We haven't talked about that on the show, really. We haven't uh, talked about it's Firepower. Reaching... Let's talk about Firepower number 12. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, I don't know. For sure. You you picked the, the fourth book. You want to read Worst Dudes? What's that? It's from Dark Horse. It's uh, Aubrey Sitterson. It's the guy that did No One Left to Fight. Um, okay. It's, it's, I'll read you the description. The right. book, so dirty, it'll turn your other comics yellow. A dirty cop, a drugged-up backup dancer, and an angsty adolescent god, the absolute worst shoes in the galaxy, are on a raunch-filled hunt for a missing pop star. It's a hilarious, aggressively weird, willfully vulgar detective story from noted reprobates. Aubrey Sitterson. <laughs> Okay, so the minute the minute the, the solicit calls the writer the creators reprobates, I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So next week we're gonna read Firepower number twelve, uh, Heroes Are Born five, Crush and Lobo number one, and Worst Dudes number one by the noted reprobates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And and we're doing a signature series at the shop, so that kind of works out. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. You yeah, guys' signature series is killing it right now. Like, but anyway, yeah, that's it yeah. for me. Yeah, all right, cool. That's it for me. And if, if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. Follow Dylan at the Dillbot on Instagram, and make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes up. Throw those comments down below. We always like to hear them, see them. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds. <laughs>